Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about heat presses. So I've talked about presses in the past and it was mostly a giant iron with an attached ironing board. And as much as I loved it, the one thing that it could not do well enough for me was have enough downward pressure for me to do things with HTV, so heat transfer vinyl. The other thing is that since it was more wide than it was deep, uh, it was a little difficult for me to do larger bag pieces without pressing twice. And in that case, I might as well throw the brunt of my body weight into a standard iron and ironing board and just do it the old fashioned way. So that's where it kind of led me to look into getting a heat press. So I've had this one for a while now and uh, I, I do enjoy it, but as you can tell, it's super duper industrial looking. I mean, look at this thing, so big. I mean, I don't even have it plugged in and it's kind of scaring me, but I'll go into detail on that. Here's what I don't like about this kind of heat press. On the very top right here, you have a screw. You do righty tighty, lefty loosey. This is how you set your tension on something like this. Here you have a bottom handle and you have a top handle so that you can pry it apart and scream when you catch your hand in just the wrong spot. That is actually an ask me how I know situation. I have done that before. So I have developed a very healthy fear of this thing because I am a mere five foot two on a good day, minus any arthritis and osteoporosis shrinking me. Um, and so I, uh, I have to put a lot of strength into this. And so in order to put enough pressure in to attach my interfacing or to make funny t-shirts and, and tote bags. I have to tighten down the pressure on it after I've pried it shut, <laughs> then loosen the pressure and then pry it open and pray. There's a lot of prayer involved with using this thing. <sighs> Allow me to demonstrate. This is gonna be great. I, hopefully I don't block the view too much. So basically I have to get in like this, take a big breath. It's not this dramatic. I'm just being funny really. But still I get up on my toes because I need extra height and I have to pry it apart. And you see how it jumps? Yeah, scares crap out of me. Now, there are two things that I could do to possibly abate my fears. One, I could tie the dang thing down to the table. It is open in the bottom here. And if I wanted to, I could snake some things in here, you know, cords, whatever, rope, hot glue, and just make it a little more stable. I could totally do that. And if I was going to keep it, that's exactly what I would be doing. The other thing is I could maybe not put it on a kitchen cart that's, you know, just a little below counter height, um, but that's just not ideal for me. And I don't have the space to put it anywhere else. Like where else am I gonna put it? Like this table is usually hiding in the corner over there. So yeah, and I, I mean, I'm not gonna pay somebody to build a table for this because this thing was $200. So it's like, eh, anyway. And yeah, they do actually make these where they swing out instead of pop up, but you still have to have the upper body strength <laughs> and the courage to actually pop it up and move it. Um, and then the reason I didn't get one of those is because it wouldn't have fit over there because they swing out to the side. It would have either hit my machine or hit the wall. Um, and he's like, no, no. I mean, I, I, I'm not being dramatic. This is at the pressure right there that I use for interfacing. So yeah, scares the mess out of me. Let's demonstrate one more time why kittens are scared to death of it. There, and it popped up in the back, which of course, you know, tie it down, be safe, don't be an idiot like me. Either way, that's what leads into the next discussion regarding heat presses. There are automatic options. I know, you're gonna go, what? How can that be? They can only look like this. 
It's absolutely the thing they used at Myrtle Beach back in 1982 when I needed a really crappy t-shirt subliminated. No, no, I need to demonstrate. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Mistakes were made. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh. Okay, remember, don't use your lower back. Use your thighs, ladies. God gave them to you for a reason. All right, I'm gonna introduce you to the automatic heat press. Oh, yeah, baby, by HTV Rant. Oh, yeah, let me introduce you to the automatic heat press by HTV Rant. It is so safe, it won't scare the poop out of you when you go to use it. It's so hot, baby, so hot. HTV Rant sent this to me, and I think I'm going to propose marriage. I'm going to leave my husband and my children so that I can spend the rest of my life with this. And if you think I'm shilling, you should see the live stream footage where I opened it up on Twitch and was like freaking out the first time I used it. Woo boy! So apart from me being absolutely in love, let's go through some of the features. Right off the bat, you can look at this and you know, you don't have to pry it apart like the jaws of life. <laughs> you just pull out the drawer. It comes with a Teflon sheet. And of course, you probably have a million of these in your house, but if you don't, these are awesome. This is all I use for pressing. It really depends on what you're pressing though. Some people like a pressing cost, uh, cloth, but these are great if you're using vinyl um, and interfacings in general. Um, it has a pad that fits into and wraps around. I, I, other reviewers are saying something about it not being all that awesome. I think it's fine. Um, it, I mean, it seems sturdy enough for me and I have not had any problems in my own personal testing of it. Um, but you put the item that you want in here, uh, you know, on the pad and you put it in and then tell it to go. I'm gonna actually demonstrate it. I just wanna make sure that I covered some of the features first. So it has preset modes, which basically work for HTV very, very well for HTV. Um, but uh, it also allows you to manually put in values. So for those of us who have to try to get shape flex to adhere without summoning um, all the powers of the gods old and new, then you can do that as well. You can adjust the timing and it just does what it needs to do. So you press the button, it pushes down, applies the pressure automatically, stays down at the temperature and the time that you set and then lifts when it's done with a nice little beep. And then you just pull out the drawer, grab what you wanted out of it, like magic or a rabbit, and because <laughs> it's magic, and there you go. I mean, that's basically it. Now, safety features, because, you know, the other one is so mechanical and so industrial. There's no safety feature. It's basically like, it, it doesn't have the warning, coffee may be hot warning. You know, the, the, it, it, it definitely, it's, it's hot. Yeah, it's, it's hot. And so is this, right? Same deal. It's a giant ironing board. So it has a feature, it has like several features in place to detect if it's gotten too hot, if it's not heating up enough, which is a fun story. Ceiling fans will set that warning off. <laughs> so don't, don't use your ceiling fan on high if you're having a hot flash. Just suffer. Just suffer through it. Um, and it has tip protection, so it knows if it's going to fall off of the table, which is pretty flippin' important if you really stop and think about it, especially if you're like me and, uh, you know, you haven't strapped it down yet. Um, I don't feel the need to have to strap this one down as much as I do the other one. The other one was up against the wall, so I didn't have to worry about it as much, but it did freak me out a little here or there. Yeah, admittedly, but there is a spot behind here where if you really needed to, you could um, apply a cord or cabling to, to secure it um, as needed. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty wicked. So let's go ahead and get through the demonstrations. First, I'm gonna do a demonstration of what applies to most of my channel is bag making. So I'm gonna do Shape Flex 101 with a layer of fleece on quilting cotton. Then I'm gonna do Decoville straight up to a piece of custom vinyl, which has that more of like a, a mesh, uh, low, low ply fleece in the back instead of like marine vinyl, which has like that net canvasy stuff. 
So you really need to interface the customs, by the way, if you're gonna get custom vinyl. Just throwing that out there. Then I will actually do an HTV project so that you can see that because they were kind enough to send me samples of their vinyls and I'd like to give them a shot. Okay, to turn it on, you just click the flashing power button which I've actually been leaving this unplugged just so I don't have the beeping light in the background all day because I also work in here. Um, you can manually set temperature and time using the custom option here. This, will, this button here, it cycles through presets. So I actually prefer preset number three for interfacing. It's 330 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds. So it's gonna go ahead and it's going to basically heat up. This is flashing red because it's in the process of heating up and you can't use it. Um, this turns automatic on or off. Of course, I'm going to have it on plus and minus to increase or decrease values. And yeah, we're just gonna let it heat up now and get to showing you how this works. Okay, so I spared you the three minutes that it took to get up to temperature, but I will point out that it got to 330 Fahrenheit faster than the super duper scary industrial one. That said, gonna go ahead and demonstrate and I won't clip it out. We're just gonna go with it. So I just have quilting cotton. This is some stuff that I've been using for pot holders. I'm going to use it uh, now in these giant swaths to make a lot of tiny little zipper wallets. Um, and this is just easier, right? So uh, again, like another little production technique. Um, oh, well, first thing is I actually do like to do a really quick press just to get the fabric perfectly flat. <laughs> so we're gonna just do that. And all I'm gonna do is press the green R button. And I'm not actually going to press this for the full 20 seconds. I just need to, to get the wrinkles out. So just, just five seconds is good. And then it just pops up and there you go. That was it. That, that's literally it. Okay, so this is just so magical. So I'm gonna take this fabric and I'm gonna put it on ShapeFlex 101 which is a woven interfacing, super popular for bags. Um, now I did do a slightly longer piece, so it's not gonna fit all the way across. It wouldn't on the other one anyway, and it definitely wouldn't have done this on the Steam Fast, which by the way, is also another really good option. But I'm gonna get into that in a bit. So we're gonna take this just to protect everything. Also, because there's still glue dots that might be exposed. I don't want those getting on the heat element at the top. I don't really need to like slam it back Press the R and let it do its thing. It's basically, it's, it's determined what pressure it needs and it's pushing down automatically and it's going to do this little countdown so it, it can math better than I can. <laughs> yeah, that, that sucks. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just super awkward to stand here. All right, there we go, woohoo! And that's it, it did it and I didn't have to you know, take weightlifting classes or start CrossFit in order to pry it apart, which is always a boon. The other boon is this isn't going anywhere. Usually with the other one, if I needed to, I had to tighten down, either tighten the pressure and have a harder time lifting it uh, to get it apart, or I had to press twice. On this one, I haven't had to do it again. So you can usually tell like in the corners if it doesn't catch it, but it caught it. Yay, and the part that I'm going to be using was under the heat element, so I'm not gonna do it again. All right, so we're gonna do another one with shape flex because I have two pieces, so the front and the back of the little wristlets I'm gonna be doing. So I'm just gonna press it, and just so you know, like if you didn't notice what I did before, I pressed R to drop it, so this button here will be green when you can use it and then to cancel and have it lift up R again. And I'll pull that out. I'm still holding on to the Teflon like it's gonna run away from me, but I'm gonna set up this next sheet. And oh, I love the way fabric smells when it comes from the fabric store and you've ironed it. It's like, it's got a scent, you know? It's got, got like this wild, completely different scent and I'm so OCD, it's gotta lay flat. Okay, so we're gonna set that down. And this is the selvage over here, so I'm just gonna swing it off to the side because I won't go over that far. I usually snip that off. Deep, deep. Put that in there and go, we are. And then 
do a little dance while it's it's pressing and I'm really awkward right now, but that's okay because I've got no rhythm. <laughs> I mean, I could speed this up, but that gets even weirder, putting weird sounds in the background. And it's done. And I don't have to touch anything except to pull out the little drawer and then that mildly satisfying peel sound. I just put that down on the ground while I'm getting this ready. So these are both basically done if that's all you need to do. But um, I'm actually going to use fleece to interface these. Ultimately, the reason I don't use fleece alone with a quilting cotton or a canvas at all is because it tends to wrinkle. So, uh, you know, I just, I, I will put shape flex on there just to give it a little bit more oomph and uh, to slightly protect those wrinkles, or from those wrinkles rather, but I don't go hog wild. So laying all of that flat, I kind of overcut, overcut a bit in the selvage. Just gonna let that kind of hang on out. Just pull it off to the side, so I don't have to worry about it. And slide that in. And more awkward pauses. <laughs> Actually, I'll just get my tea so you can enjoy a tea or do something else while it's doing this thing instead of staring at it with anxiety brain going, I've got to lift you in eight seconds. <laughs> it's so nice not to have to do that. Ah, there you see, I enjoyed a sip of my tea. And there's the fleece. And if you, if you hate fleece, as much as I do from the attachment perspective, um, you'll be pleasantly surprised this is not going anywhere. And the way you can tell is that it looks terribly compressed on the backside. Let me see if that, if you can see the textures, I might have to add a little contrast and post, but it barely has any texture to it. And that's how you know it got pressurized and sealed in with the heat as opposed to this, which still has the loft on it. So there's a difference. You see how this is more lofty than this one? Yeah, it's on there. It's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. All right. Now take that out and place it. And I will say this plate here doesn't get hot. I mean, it's a little hot to the touch when it first comes out from the pressure, but it's not so hot now that it's been out that I have to worry about it being like, ah, was the other one. I basic, I have pot holders up here just in case. And I'm not even kidding. Look, I'm going to spend the 20 awkward seconds going across the room to get my pot holders that I had to use with that thing. Well, there. Do, 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 do. Yep. Three, two, one. Ah, okay, there we are, and that, that's it, it's done. Now, fleece, regardless of what you do, is, is gonna wrinkle up a bit, so while it's still hot, I, you can grab the hot pads if you want, but I just take it and kind of smooth it out a bit right after it's done, because if I hadn't used the Shape Flex 101, it wouldn't have done that. But since I use the Shape Flex 101, there's still a little bit of the glue, and so I can still like smooth it out and get those wrinkles out of the quilting cotton. So there you go. This is awesome, by the way, if you're gonna do wristlets, this is what you want right here. You don't have to do Decoville with everything. But speaking of Decoville, I have a piece of custom vinyl right here, and you can see from the back, that's what the backing of the custom vinyls look like. And it's not bad vinyl. It's all good stuff. It's just not the same kind of backing that you would see on a marine vinyl. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, the marine vinyl basically has a canvas style mesh on the back of it. So it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. And one of the things people love to do is use Decaville, especially with those faux leathers. So it can sometimes just be a pain in the butt to get to stay still. And I'm gonna prove that this can do it. So this, this is pretty cool. 
All right, so we're gonna take this and I tend to put my vinyl right side facing down. Um, so instead of, instead of having the Teflon sheet on top of it, I'm going to have one that's right here that's facing down because my Decaville is spilled over the edge a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab another one, which I have hiding underneath, and I'm gonna put it on top. So I have a Teflon sandwich, and this is to protect the mat from the Decaville, and then to protect the heating element from the vinyl, just in case anything curls up. Now, when I do vinyl, I do a 10 second press, and I tend to do it at a lower temperature. So I'm going to cycle through the presets. It goes up to 30, 90, and 40 seconds, but we don't need that. So the lowest one in preset one is 315 seconds. So 300 Fahrenheit at 15 seconds. And I'm going to let it just cool down for a little bit because that cooling down, that's going to bring it down to the temperature I want. If I had pressed that vinyl at 330, it probably would have pressed the texture out of it. Not so much a big deal with this particular clip of a vinyl because this vinyl is smooth already. There is a tiny bit of texture. So I don't wanna make it look glassy um, and it can also compress the vinyl to the point where it loses a lot of its like look, luster, the look it's supposed to have. It doesn't look as plush, I guess. So we'll let that come down in temperature and I'm gonna pick out a design that I wanna put on a canvas bag. Okay, it's come down to temperature and I was able to set up the Cricut. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press R. Now, I'm not gonna press for 15 seconds. Now, and I could have customized it. That would have been fine too. But since I'm just standing here and talking to you softly into your ear, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and stop it when I'm five seconds down. So I'm only going to allow it to press for 10 seconds and there. You don't want to press too long with vinyl. It could really mess it up. So that's all we need to do in terms of the pressure. I'm going to take it out of there. Oh yeah, now it's, it's going to be really hot to the touch. It's plastic, that's what vinyl is. So I'm just going to kind of yeet it that way and let it do its thing. And for safety, since it's gonna be a while as I'm recording and everything, to cut out and prep the Cricut bag, or cr cr Cricut, anyway, prep the HTV on the Cricut to put on the bag, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna turn it off because I'm not using it and it's heating up the room. <laughs> so we're just gonna chill for a hot second and take a peek at the now cooled down vinyl which has, the, please focus, very successfully fused the Decoville to it. So that is nice. It is on there. It's not going anywhere. And this still has its texture. I will tilt it so you can kind of see the texture in it. There we go. All right. So I'm going to cut out something glorious to put on a canvas bag that I have notoriously had problems adhering HTV to because it's somewhat lumpy and uneven. I could never get the right pressure on the more industrial manual style heat press. But this one on stream the other night? Whew. So they sent me a sample pack. These are their Chameleon HTVs. And you can see they're super shimmery and cool, even with my blinds in the background. But um, yeah, I ended up choosing this like teal. It's like shifting teal to purple. It's super neat. I love this kind of stuff. This is awesome. Like I very rarely do things with HTV, but since starting to spin up a farmer's market inventory, I'm having to look into it for things like this, for those shopping bags, because it'll be so much easier to just make shopping totes for them from blanks using this and you can't really use embroidery with that mostly because like it's going to get just torn apart and the embroidery on the inside would basically show and i don't have to deal with that but yes we have this really pretty teal chameleon that we're going to use that was provided by htv ron since they provided this vinyl i kind of feel obligated to show you uh, the weeding process of their HTV. 
which is funny because there's only like really two spots that I need to weed. But I'm going to go ahead and do that while we're here on the camera. And I'm just going to start it up here. And of course, I'm I'm fairly I'm fairly new to doing anything with HTV. So if you know of a better way of weeding, it's totally cool. You can let me know in the comments. It doesn't bother me to get feedback like that. All right. I'm just going to pull. <laughs> just pull it off. It's so pretty, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I hate, I hate that it wastes so much of the material. I feel like, I feel like I could optimize this. Like, this is one of those things where I won't do it for interfacing because, like, I don't care. But when it comes to the HTV, I do try to uh, save as much of it as possible. You know what? I'm just going to stab it um, instead of wasting, like, this whole little section over here but I also kind of suck at measuring and laying things out in precise areas. So I don't optimize as well as I could. I'm gonna take that and pull that out. All right, that did really well. The first thing I'm gonna do is get well all of this out of here because we've gotten up to the heat, the temp that I need. And I'm gonna put my tote bag in here and I'm just gonna give it one press before I do anything else. And I am gonna put a Teflon sheet on top of it. This is organic cotton and it will yellow. Um, so just uh, you know, bear that in mind. So I've got this set by the way to preset number two, which is 320 Fahrenheit at 15 seconds. I don't need the whole 15 seconds. I just wanna apply a little, you know, a little heat to this, get it warmed up. So I'm just, you know, for, for <laughs> quickness sake I'm just going to pull that off of there and now I'm going to put my HTV in place okay we have the bag and we have all the HTV so I'm just gonna center it where I want it like so we're gonna start first with the <laughs> with the the emotional baggage portion so I'm going to start with that and then I'll come back. I've got to cut this part out because this will go here and then stuff will go down here at the bottom like that. But I need to press this one first and then I can press this one. Okay, got it in place. I'm going to take this and put it up here. And just a word to the wise, I do try to leave the portion up here with the handles out because it's thicker and I don't want to have a problem with it at all in terms of like adhering. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that in and let it do its thing. Lord, this is straight. I don't think I checked to see if it was straight. We're just gonna hope it is. Otherwise it becomes a bag for the kids, which would be bad considering what I put on it, but you know, whatever, it's details. There we go. <laughs> And we're going to pull that out. This is the part where with the other one, I would basically peel up the end and go, nope, not yet. It's not on there yet. And it always worried me. Yikes. So let's try it. All right. Moment of truth. Did it stick? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's the exact same thing that happened on stream the other night. Not just about collapsed and died because that, that's pretty like the other one I had to press so many times it was ridiculous all right so I'm gonna cut this out of here getting as close to the letters as I can because I don't I don't want to have to deal with overlapping plastic Boop. these are by the way this is not fabric scissors these are scissors that are specifically for paper and craft stuff so nobody panic, it's fine. No fabric scissors were harmed in the making of this video. Not yet anyway, <laughs> the night is young. Boop, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put stuff in here and do my best to center it. I know there are better ways of doing these. like lining up stuff. You can line up things. I don't know. There's a lot of tricks to the HTV world and then stick and my 
in there. All right. Whew. Let's press it. Now that I've got this ready to go, let's get the, the random pieces of plastic out of there. I don't have to go as far down this time, but I still need to cover this. So where did I put that plastic? So I'm going to take this plastic bit here that I had from the emotional baggage portion Woo -hoo! and protect it by covering it just a smidge, but I don't want to cover everything. I just wanted to cover that part up and put it in there and wait and bite your nails if you've got them, but I don't have them. I have to keep them short because I program for a living and I play violin. So having long nails doesn't help at all. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, here we go. <gasps> How's it looking? How's it looking? <gasps> okay, let's take off the plastic. Let's start peeling it away. Ooh, it's looking nice. And mind you, this bag is, uh, has some texture to it, so it might cause texture to show on the vinyl. And I can't talk while doing this. I always kind of hold my breath because I'm not used to stuff sticking on the first go. Oh, yeah. It is moderately satisfying to do this, though. I just got to point that out. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that and the shimmer on it. Yes. Ta-da. All done. So I was able to put HTV vinyl on a canvas tote bag that is now going to get sold at the farmer's market, mind you. We prepped fabric for tonight's stream. So that's awesome. And that's both SF-101 and fleece sticking pretty nicely. And this is after me like bantering around with it in the room and then custom vinyl with Decaville on the back. So let's talk about pricing and why you need this versus something else like that thing over there that scares me and tried to kill me in my sleep. This magnificently scary thing that you had to pry open like alligator jaws goes for $200. If you want one of those alligator jaw things, but it spins out and might be a little easier to deal with for those who are height challenged such as myself, it's $230. If you would rather have a more tailored style steam press, those go for about $200. And if you need the stand for it so you don't use available space on your tables, because I have so much available space on my tables, then you need to spend another 80 bucks to get a stand for it. Or you could spend $295 and get the automatic heat press. So really, the choice is up to you as to what you want and what works best for you in your studio. For me, I like consistent and professional results. You cut corners, you're gonna get some very inconsistent results and it cheapens your product, which is why I don't use Coates and Clark thread. I hope that this video helped you understand the purpose of heat presses in general, not just this particular one, but how they can be used to help you put interfacing on your bags and make the process a lot faster. Um, that whole thing where I said this is going to become several little wristlets, yeah, that's fast. Not when I'm recording it, but in general, when I'm able to work uninterrupted, it's super fast. And this works great. And I don't have to press multiple times and I don't spend several hours standing over an ironing board with one iron that's this big and cry to myself when I go to bed at night. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, leave comments down below, hit the bell, and all those wonderful things that YouTubers tell you to do that you never do because nobody ever actually wants to do those things. Anyway, love you guys. Take it easy. I'm uh, going to go elope with the, uh, with the, the, the auto press now, okay? I'm, I'm leaving you. Why are you still here? Bye?